So we came down and we set up on the Rogue River. Good spot. Machine's running really good. We're opening a hole. We've been working for about 30 minutes. Go down and take a look at the new classifier. Okay, so here's the classifier. See, it's working pretty good. Virtually all the water goes into the lower boxes, which we want. And you gotta still knock a few off by hand, but it works way better than anything else we've used as a classifier. Got the next generation right there. That's Daniel Adams. Lower sluice boxes appear to be looking really good. Okay, we've been mining now for about three hours. Eric has already established himself as a guy. He likes to mine vertically. So I went in there, I opened, he, first he dug a, a, a vertical hole. I went in there and opened it way up. Now he's dropped the whole gosh darn thing down. And you can see how deep he is in there. And he wants to go deeper still. And of course, hopefully we'll hit the bedrock here eventually. Now we already cleaned up the machine one time. Got a lot of good gold in there. So we're on our second run. Again, we're three hours into it here on the Rogue River. John is panning out the, the concentrates. Right here, don't come over here, so maybe that's a sucker will sit there, you know what I mean? And what, what they gotta do now is they gotta cut out that bank that's right underneath, right where his hand is. They've gotta cut that bank out so we can drop, drop the nozzle assembly vertically which is going to work a lot better than just trying to extend the forward nozzle. Box is working really, really well. Really well. Of course, the classifier, it's still a manual operation back there with the classifier. And as long as we keep it clear where the under sluice dumps, it's fine. But if it builds up and we lose them um, and, and we get a bunch of back pressure up there, then the sluice starts jamming up with material. About five hours now. Kurt tells me the hole we're digging looks like the one that he spent weeks digging with the shovel. I did it with my back! I bet you Kurt will never go back to shoveling after this. Never. Now John has this technique where he uses the blaster nozzle right down there by the by the forward nozzle. And then of course we got the big the big one inch bypass coin. There's some really, really nice hard packed red material a layer right here. And there's um there's like a packed sand layer above it, and then there's another layer below it. But it's got that real nice red stuff. You know there's good gold in that. I'll tell you what, we moved a lot of material today. Sunday morning, cleaned up the box, fired up. Eric is um, taking the hole down. Okay, we're in the final stage of the operation here. We've taken the gantry away and dropped the nozzle all the way down. And Eric's got a nice rock sitting there that the nozzle.
I don't see the rust layer yet from 1964. There was a there was a red layer down in here, right on top. You see this clay? Point to it. The first clay layer. Point to it. See right there? Yeah, I do see that. There was a red layer. You could see it yesterday. That went right. Was right on top of this. So I don't know. Right here. There you go, John. Yep. See right there? Yeah, there was. I um. And up above, there was two different layers. Of we should start seeing car parts and bigger pieces of So maybe steel. that was another false bedrock layer right, right on top of the... Well, we will see what we find. I know that big rock is coming out, and the nozzle's going right in the hole left for it. And we've gone down quite a bit. As long as our lantern don't run out of fuel. <laughs> We are all the way down on the bedrock. John is cleaning the bedrock right now. Open it up around the nozzle. We figured this hole is um, over 10 yards at this point. That we've dug and the distance from the top of the jet assembly to where he is is probably um, 9 to 10 feet. So we're quite a ways down with this 4 inch machine. Aside from the classifier, which is still a freaking hands-on affair, I'm really happy with the way everything else is doing. Eric has got the technique to keep the grizzly clear with this pry bar. And we're monitoring everything because we're I'm sure we're into our best gold at this point. So we're being real careful to keep everything with the box all nice and dialed in. We've added an additional short section here. So we have that short piece of pipe, and then we have a six footer, and then we have the upper nozzle, another short piece of the Tiger Flex, and then the forward nozzle. Man, that is a deep hole. 